Listen guys, I just fought the behemoth for like 15 hours straight now. You know how long it took me to beat him? Like 10 hours. I fought this guy like 30 times. You know how many times I beat him? Like 2 times. I never even died myself. So right now I'm going to channel all that dedication and raw experience into the complete best guide I can make for the behemoth fight. In this video I'm going to share every tip I can come up with about beating this fight. I'm going to explain the roles that the people in your party have to play. I'm going to go through the types of builds you need and I'm going to show the behemoth's elemental and status weaknesses. Then I'm going to do a run through of the entire fight highlighting the mechanics and tips you need to know about. Uh, feel free to skip around the video to find any relevant information if you don't want to watch. Okay, starting out with the tips. The first tip I can tell you is to invite your friends and play together. Four people on mics can be the first and most important step to victory. You can work on a perfect strategy together. But don't invite just any friends. Be sure to steer clear of your scrub friends, for real, for real. If they just hit hunter rank 14 or something, you need to come up with an excuse not to invite them. And I'm only halfway joking. You're going to need a team of bosses to stand a chance against this guy. People in bad gear are actually worse than a random SOS person with good gear, remember that. Every person needs to at least augment and upgrade their armor. The second most important tip I can give is know your team roles. Monster Hunter has basically created an MMO tank DPS healer meta in their game like we were playing World of Warcraft or something. You're basically going to need these roles to win. I'm going to explain all the roles in detail now so you can know which one you want to be. Okay, starting off you really want a person to be a tank. The tank's job is to hit the monster in the head enough times until the monster focuses on them. The reason for this is if the behemoth is focused on the tank, it won't do a lot of its ridiculous area of effect attacks and annihilate your team. Also the tank can lead the monster around the area. The tank should be in their best defensive armor, they'll definitely need vitality, pride, divine protection, you'll need resistance maybe, and guard skills. Every single person on this fight pretty much needs 200 HP or they might get one shotted. It's recommended that the tank be able to block with the lance and gun lance being the best weapons. But any weapon can tank if you're good. Uh, I use the great sword to tank. Make sure if you want to tank you know how to do your jobs and I'll explain that in the fight walkthrough. At the very least you're going to need at least one dedicated DPS utility or extra guy whose only job it is is to completely annihilate the monster. The monster has a lot of health so low DPS will make the fight unmanageable. Have at least one or two people on your team use all the offensive stats they can manage. The best damage class on the behemoth right now is the bowgun. The bowgun offers constant DPS and utility. You can use cluster bombs or make it fall asleep. If you don't have a bowgunner, your team is already at a disadvantage. An all melee team is already a few steps behind. You can still pick a melee damage roll, but just attack the front legs most of the time. The best spot for damage and safety is the front legs. If you don't know how to tank or use wide range and heal, you must remember to only focus on damaging utility like sleep and paralyze for the whole fight. The team can only afford two people at most just doing the damage slash utility roll. The healer or buffer role is the most important role in the whole entire fight. Their job is to save people. A successful run has zero people dying to the behemoth's normal moves. That's all on the healer. There will be times where a wide range healer is the only thing that can save a life. The behemoth can two shot almost anybody. At the very least, you need a bill with full wide range. A support hunter horn bill will serve this role the best. Check out my build guide for the best support build in the game currently. It's a good video. There's a lot going on for the support role. Just try to prioritize support stats or watch my other video. A non hunter horn class can also be the support, but they have to use speed eating and know how to consistently heal the team. If you have two wide range people, you can almost guarantee somebody won't randomly die in the fight and that's very valuable. Buffs are also very valuable as well. A team can only carry one person not providing these roles. If two people are just running around being scrubs, the run is most likely doomed to fail. Choose a role and fulfill it as best as you can. Uh, if you want to know an elemental or status weakness, you can look at the field guide. You can see it's weak against dragon mostly. You can hurt it with water and ice too, but that's about all. It's weak to every status effect, so just exploit uh, status effects on this guy. Also, always bring Temporal Mantle and whatever other mantle you can use. Probably definitely not Rocksteady unless you're a boss like me. 
Now that you know the roles, I'm going to go over pre-quest preparation before I get to the behemoth walkthrough. So the first thing you need is full items. Just get all the potions you can carry. If you're serious about your run, don't forget attack and defensive buffs. The behemoth can be flashed an unlimited amount of time, so bring 10 flash bugs from every member on the team. Traps don't work, no berries are useful, just make sure you have a full inventory and any useful items. For eating, before every attempt, try to get feline insurance so your team can have extra lives. Also, you can get moxie and survive an attack that will otherwise kill you. Uh, you can pretty much eat for your roll, just eat whatever you want. Now we're getting to the main part of the video, the walkthrough, so I can quickly share all the behemoth mechanics and give you all the tips that you'll need. When you first drop in the mission, your whole team will be together, so you should use this time to give buffs to your team. You should also take the time to eat food and get free items from the box. Only noobs don't take free items from the box. There are phases to this fight like an MMO. There's four phases no matter what. Each phase is each area he goes to. In the first area, he's most tame. A good tip for this area is to use the rocks to make sure the phase goes faster. They do a lot of damage. From a tank's perspective on this fight, you want to gain enmity. Enmity means you have aggro on the monster. You do this by hitting the monster on the head. The reason you do this is so you can lead the monster around. He stops running around like a madman when you're tanking him. When somebody has enmity, they're going to get focused. The behemoth is going to spam a bunch of smashes and fireways on that person, so a big shield or a healer is required. From a DPS perspective, you only want to attack the front legs and tail mostly. Hitting the head will just get you aggro and you won't be able to survive. Try to position yourself on the side of the monster to avoid the cone attacks focused on the tanks. A ranged person is pretty effective here. They only have a few things to worry about. For your healer, all you have to do is watch the health of your team. Get in there and play buffs or use items on your team. You can get away with one person just using wide range or a full support character. Having two wide range characters is optimal just in case. The beginning phase is easy, he doesn't do too much, but when he takes enough damage he'll move out of the area and go on to the second phase. Every phase is based off of damage, so low damage will make this fight take extra long. On the second phase begins the real fight, so I'm going to explain the move set that the behemoth has. Most of the moves are telegraphed on the right side of the screen so you know what he's about to do. When you get to the second area, the behemoth is going to spam this move called Charybdis. It'll turn blue and that means the behemoth is going to spawn a tornado on somebody. If you have a tornado on you, your job is to move to the edge of the area where the tornado won't be in the way. The catch is that you can interrupt the tornado with flash bombs. A good team will bring flash bombs to the fight. He can be interrupted an unlimited amount of times, but he'll st he won't stay stunned for long. The blue time is the best time to get damage in, but you can balance how to take advantage of the tornado move. An annoying move he does is Meteor, where he'll just spawn random meteors on people. This move can be dodged, but only if you're moving before it happens. The people are going to get hit by this OP move, but that's why there's a healer. The Behemoth will also do a lightning move where he shocks the ground quickly and follows up with a lightning storm. The move doesn't hit behind the Behemoth or directly in front of him, so once you see this move you can anticipate the trajectory of it, so it's not that hard to dodge. You can just spam dodge if you have to. He'll do a bunch of frontal cone attacks mostly on the tank. This one's annoying and way too fast to dodge. But if you're the tank, just block and angle the behemoth's face away from your team. The behemoth will do a bunch of smashes and melee attacks. Just be wary of them. A good strategy is to cut off the tail early. It'll reduce the range of some of his attacks. One of the behemoth's cool moves is when he lunges on a player and skewers them with his horn causing them to bleed. You can't block it, and then it'll pound you to the ground and it'll throw you. Moves unblockable, that's the reason that there's a healer. Just heal through it. If you ever get knocked down, just spam your controller until you move. I explained the normal moves, but there's a main mechanic to this fight that you have to be aware of. It's the Comet mechanic. Starting in phase 2, 3, and 4, if you do enough damage, the behemoth will spawn a Comet. You can easily dodge it, but it will leave a permanent rock in the area. The best thing to do is drop it off in a common spot in the area. You'll need these comets to stand behind for the one-shot mechanic, the Ecliptic Meteor. 
In my experience, the rate of the comments is directly linked to how much damage you're doing. If your team is doing bad damage, this guy might only spawn two comets. But if you're destroying the monster, you can get like five comets to spawn. Comets can be destroyed by the monster, so if you're the tank, you want to lead the behemoth away from the comets. It'll take three or four hits for the behemoth to kill a comet, so you'll be cool as long as you have a tank. After two to three comets at least, the ecliptic meteor will come. Uh, only trolls don't know how to get behind the comet and protect yourself from the ecliptic meteor, so just don't be a troll. Just line yourself up to the impact point of the ecliptic meteor. The mechanic's pretty simple, all you have to do is not be a troll character and you can do it. Once you survive the ecliptic meteor, the phase is over. You have to do this mechanic phase 2, 3, and 4, so get used to it. If you're unable to get behind a meteor for some reason, maybe they're all broken, you can use the Final Fantasy jump emote and escape it. Uh, you have to jump when the smoke is coming, you have to land when the smoke is gone. It requires some experience, but you can actually pull it off if you really have to. It's said that if you break the horn before phase 3, the behemoth will go to the Nergigantes area, but if the horns are unbroken, he goes to the Fire Teostra area. I wasn't paying too much attention, so I'm not sure though. Once you get to phase 3, you have to do everything again. Tornadoes, comets, meteors, you get the idea. Thanks to your job, get aggro on the monster, make it go to a good place for your team. DPS, keep pushing the monster to drop comets. Healers just damage and then heal your team and keep buffing it. The phase is the same as phase 2, so just watch out for these moves. Uh, if you're damaging the monster enough, a bunch of meteors will spawn, so just get behind them when it's time and you should be on to the last phase. I also forget to mention if the phase is over, feel free to go back to camp and resupply and heal. It's usually a good thing to stop at camp after phase 2 and 3. I also didn't mention there's a mechanic in this fight where if nobody's attacking the monster when it goes to the next area, it will start healing. I think it'll tell you when it happens, but I have the suspicion that the monster heals no matter what when somebody's there. You want to minimize the downtime on the monster no matter what though. A good strategy to employ is the sleep bomb method in phase 3 or 4. Just have the gunner put the monster to sleep and place large barrel bombs on the head if you haven't broken the horns. And if you broke the horns, just place them on the front paws. Uh, you get the idea. Just light them up. The bomb's damage will most likely get them to use the meteors more quickly, so the end is the best time for this. For the final phase, the behemoth will either be in the Teostras or Negrigantes area. Whatever the case is, the fight's going to get a little harder. The monster is kind of permanently in rage mode. He starts spamming tornadoes at non-stop in this phase too. This phase is most important to interrupt the tornadoes because you'll be overrun. This is the most important phase to do the mechanics right because of how crazy he is. He'll be doing like crazy damage and there's a potential for him to only spawn two meteors so you must protect the meteors the most. Just keep healing, damaging, and taking. Just do your best. Uh, after the first few meteors, he's going to do his final ecliptic meteor just like the other phases. At this point, you're probably down to one life left, so make sure your team is not scrubs. Tell them to look out for the ecliptic meteor. After this last one drops, the behemoth instantly dies, and you win. You can be relieved. It took me like 40 tries to learn all this stuff, but once you beat it, you can farm them like all the time. You get a lot of cars. You only have to beat it a few times to get all the armor and weapons from this guy. Uh, just for some farming tips, just run with the same group if you can. Make sure you follow the uh, party rolls guide. But in case you don't have any friends, I have some SOS farming tips. Uh, when you get in the SOS finder, just fix all the settings for Behemoth. Then look for people doing the mission you want to do. Uh, first, you have to look out for the person with the highest hunter rank. 200 is not even quite enough. You want to find somebody that's like, 300 to 700 and if they're Asian that's an added bonus the only main criteria you're looking for is like 300 hunter rank plus an Asian after that you can look for uh, the weapons they have look at the player info tab look at your whole team see what they're like uh, you can tell what role they're playing by their weapon a lance or gun lance you know they're gonna be a tank 
a bow gun or a bow, you know they're ranged and they're going to have some good damage and utility. Uh, stupid DPS like a long sword or a sword and shield, uh, they'll be useless, so watch out for them. Uh, Hunter horn, you know they're going to be a healer. Uh, best thing you can do is fill the role that you're missing. Wide range is usually the skill missing in all this, so having one to two healers is pretty important. In any case, that's all the tips I can muster. If you learned anything, please like the video. It helps a lot so more people can see it. Leave a comment so I can know what you thought. Uh, once you learn this guy, you can farm all day. An extreme difficulty mode is coming out for the behemoth soon. I can't wait. I'm going to be busy this month. There's going to be a lot of arch-tempered Teostra and Kushala fights coming soon. So, I'm going to look out for that too. I'm coming out with videos for everything, and I also stream all the time, so please subscribe if you haven't hit the notification button so you catch my next uploads. Uh, if you want to be part of a stream or you just want to play the game, get some help, just add me on PSN. My username is Edwal. We can play, do any mission, we can even play Fortnite, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I think that's everything. Just watch out for my other stuff, guys, and I'll see you later. Peace.